afternoon, everybody. I would like to call this special council meeting to order at 410 um, to review budgets. Oh, the date. Sorry. February 8th, 2018. I'll read the opening statement. Thank you. Let the minutes reflect that adequate notice of the holding of this special meeting of the Howell Township Council was provided for in the following manner. By the posting of a copy of said notice upon the bulletin board in the Township Municipal Building on January 30th, 2018. By the faxing of a copy of said notice to the Tri-Town News, Asbury Park Press, and Star Ledger for information and publication on January 30th, 2018. By the filing of a copy of said form of notice in the Township Clerk's Office on January 30th, 2018. The public will be allowed to attend and will be allowed to participate pursuant to the open public meetings law. The public is reminded that civility and decorum will be maintained during the meeting. Any contracts awarded at this meeting or between now and the next meeting will be required to comply with the requirements of Public Law 1975, Chapter 127, NJAC 17, colon 27. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code, be advised that this facility is designed with emergency exits for your safety. Upon exiting the meeting room, they are to your left and to the right. Furthermore, smoking is not permitted in the municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Television. Also, no food or beverage is permitted in this room. If we could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I would like to open up for discussion for 2018 municipal budget. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. I've prepared a presentation for um, the 2018 budget, uh, at least where we're at as to this point. Uh, just to review uh, the budget process so far, um, it began with the department submitting their, their requests. Uh, the manager held hearings in early November. Uh, that was during my first week of employment here, so it was a little bit of trial by fire. Uh, we followed up with the uh, documentation and then reviewing with each of the department heads. Uh, and then we've revised the budget a few times uh, to try and get to these finalized numbers. There is a copy of the presentation in front of each one of you. Um, and I also need to extend my sincere thanks to both Lou and Jim for their help with navigating me through this process, being it's obviously my first budget, doing it the, the Howell way. Mm. Is uh, there any other way? <laughs> yeah, each town has some nuances. Um, just to back up to go over where we were for 2017, um, we anticipated um, total revenue of 48, just over 48 million. And we ended with 50.8 million. Um, just a quick note of uh, some of the larger variants, uh, the miscellaneous revenues, uh, the variation was attributed mostly to um, the construction fees. Um, there was an increase in construction fees collected and interest on investments. Uh, and then also the property taxes, uh, there was a jump in the added and omitted. Um, did we receive FEMA money back too? We did. I'll get to that in a little bit with the uh, surplus. Um, next page just reviews the, the surplus beginning of 17, the end of 17. Um, we regenerated just over uh, $6.6 .6 million. Uh, most of that was attributed to our Hurricane Sandy reimbursement. Um, large portion was the 2016 budget numbers that were expiring, that were still on the books. Uh, again, the added and omitted and construction fees all added to that $6.6 .6 million surplus. Um, 
throughout the year, we had 98.2% um, collection rate. Uh, it's a 0.06% decrease from the previous year, which, um, as our CFO reported to me, that's normal fluctuations each year. Um, it's minor adjustments. <clears throat> um, just to break down, um, whoops. Our uh, rateables, 2017 versus 2018, we see a significant jump um, the, of about $278 million. Uh, most of that's due to new construction as well as the Mammoth uh, Assessment Demonstration Program. So you missed page six. Yeah, I was going to say, did, I was a little... All right, I missed that one, didn't come up in the slideshow. Uh, anyway, page six, as you have in your handouts, is just a breakdown of the, the tax rate of a resident's total tax bill. Uh, for 2017, 16.29% of that went towards municipal purposes. 47.8% um, went to the local school taxes. 17.89% towards uh, the high school tax. 12.39% towards Monmouth County, 48 to your fire districts, and that's an average because each of the five districts has a different rate. 0.83% um, for municipal open space, totaling 100%. But again, only 16% is attributed to municipal purposes. Our current fund appropriations, um, the, the difference between what was actually expended versus the adopted budget, uh, we do, do have some money still set aside for uh, three of our labor contracts that are still in negotiations. Um, and there's still some leftover bills from the year end between legal or snow events as well as any finalized November, December bills. So are we going to owe back when we settle these contracts? Is that what that money's for? It would come out of that, but um, Lou had uh, previously budgeted very conservatively, so I nah. am very confident that we'll come in well under that amount. Um, so getting into the 2018 budget, um, obviously it's a big job for all involved. Um, you know, we're all trying to balance needs, the security, the services to the residents, balancing that with the municipal obligations as well as the cost to the taxpayers. <clears throat> um, going into our um, needs, what we are proposing is uh, $50,899,000 in municipal appro appropriations which is an increase of 3132000 uh, That increase is largely due to non-discretionary spending. Um, I'll have a little more detail as to that in a later slide. Um, the amount to be raised by taxation is increasing by $650,208. Breaking down some of the larger areas of our appropriation, there's the salaries. There's an increase of just over a million dollars, $1,045,546 to be exact. Um, this counts for contracts still in negotiation, as well as the PBA contract that was recently settled. Um, so that amount uh, of that $1 million, um, between their 1.25% raise, steps, longevity, increase in holiday, uh, that's $476,000, which is about 45% of that number. Uh, additionally, 202000 of that is the SLEO 3 program that the council had previously agreed to with the schools through shared service agreement. Um, 
the next biggest number, the two million thirty-five thousand uh, increase for this year. Most of that is uh, debt service um, to the tune of one point two five million dollars. Pension contribution is almost three hundred thousand. Uh, we have increased our legal budget uh, in light of recent events. Uh, Social Security has increased 163,000. And health benefits, uh, we've seen an increase of 124,000. Um, although our premium has stayed flat, there's been changes either in employees that had previously declined benefits and are now taking them, or their status may have changed from single to married, family, that kind of thing. Run those numbers by me again, please. We sure. have 400 and how much was in PBA? Um, okay, looking at the salary change number, that 1045000 uh, mm -hmm. of that amount is 1.25% for the PBA increase on their top step. Their step raises, longevity, any education allowance, increase in holiday pay, that total is $476,015. It's 45.5% of that number. Okay. And then 202000 is for the SLEO 3 program, the police officers in the schools. For specials in schools. Yes, That's sir. That's included in that number, is that correct? That's part of that one million dollars. Okay. Yes. But not part of the four seventy six. No. Correct. Six hundred and seventy seven thousand is going to the specials. And that's why any new hirees except for the specials, well you call them SL threes or whatever. The specials in the schools, six hundred and seventy seven thousand is going towards police. And is this including the police. SOA or no? No. This is just a PBA and the uh, specials. That, that's correct. Okay. So that's six seventy seven of the million forty five. Yes, sir. Okay. Non discretionary. You have two million dollars here. Yes. I I got the one twenty four for health, one sixty three in social security. One hundred and thirty in legal that we're budgeting for. That is all you put into legal. One hundred and thirty additional. How what are you up to in legal? Four hundred and ten thousand for outside council services. With all these lawsuits, you think, and I'm asking you a question here. Do you think four hundred ten thousand is going to cover the legal expense with all these legal fees we have coming in on us right now? Or you think you're being conservative, or do you think we're going to need more than that in the long run? I think for this year that would probably be sufficient. You know, it's, it's not going to be resolved within 2018, I'm sure. So it's going to be carried over several years. I don't know if it's a matter of being okay. done. It's a matter Listen. of the work that has to be done. I have, I have the feeling 410 is going to be a big short change, but let's pray I'm wrong. Let's hope so. Okay. Uh, in addition, with some of the changes that we were able to include in our insurance coverage, Hopefully they will be picking up more of the tab than they formerly did. So, okay. okay. Any other questions on yeah, this? Yeah, Brian, of, of the of yes. the one million forty-five increase in salaries. So you gave us two numbers. You gave us the the salaries of PD and the class threes, right? Right. What's the balance? There's a balance of three sixty-seven. Um, there's an amount that was um, set aside for the contracts assuming that they're going to be settling in the very near future. Um, How much of that was set aside for contracts? About $185,000. Okay. And what's the balance? And then there were a few new hires that are being proposed. And the balance is for the new hires. Mm -hmm. How yeah. much does that equate to? Uh, the, the new hire request is $178,712. There should actually be a sheet in your, in your packets that you did receive titled the titled teaching. itemized breakdown of the uh, spending increase. It, it should all be broken down there for you. 178? 178.712. Thank you. Anything else on this? Well, I met with them so you know, Rob. 
We, we, the other contracts we're going to have to settle pretty soon. They're all up, right? TWU, TWU, Teamsters, and SOA. And, and that's why he's budgeting 185. I'm good with that. Yeah, so we're putting. I didn't think it was fair not to put it in the budget because it's going to be an expense that comes on us this year, and it's going to be something that's going to be retroactive when it gets settled. So, to not put it there wouldn't be prudent. Plus, okay. Lou would, plus Lou wouldn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have so much wiggle room. <laughs> well, Lou, what's the secret? How can you control them? Nobody can control them. What's it's, their secret? If somebody knows then and wants to share that information with me, I'd, I'd, I'd be glad to have it. <laughs> Stop it. Okay. But now. the non-discretionary only mentioned about approximately 400000 What's the rest of it for? $1.25 was debt service. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes, Correct. sir. Thank you. What happened is we, uh, some of the capital that was spent, we locked it all up at lower rates and last year, uh, which actually looks very prudent now as rates are much higher as we know than they were a year ago and two years ago. But when you lock it up and you, and you put it on your bond, it, you, don't pay as, mm -hmm. you don't pay as little as you do on interest on short-term rates as you do when you lock it up over a long period of time. Okay. But we're probably three quarters of a percent lower on the rate where we bonded it than where the rates are now. So in the long run, it saved the taxpayers a how? Last year's rates. A lot of money. But with that, the full payment comes aboard too. Mm -hmm. It's not an interest only. So moving on to the sources of our revenue um, of the proposed uh, $50 million budget. Um, we would be using a surplus of $6.195 million. Uh, miscellaneous revenues are pretty consistent. Uh, state aid, um, I'm advised that that has been a consistent number for many years now, and it's not expected to change, so we're using that as a constant. Uh, the grants, uh, that number is award letters that have been received by the Finance Department to date. Um, DOT, Alliance, Senior Center, things like that. Uh, and that also accounts for the $150,000 reimbursement from the school district for the SLEO 3 program. So we're budgeting the full amount and then showing a revenue for the half from the school. So how much they give it us back? $150,000. Um, moving down the list, um, the other variation, the Decrease in delinquent taxes, that number is driven by the state tax appeals. So, um, told by our CFO that he's pretty confident that that's a, a good number to use for the year. And that's ending with a, a total municipal budget of $50,899,000, which is an increase of $3.1 over last year, or 6.5%. And now that that's 6.5%, we already know that about 2.4 of it is... A good portion is non-discretionary. Um, so the school is... I'm sorry. Yes, sir. The, the, the school, you said, is given the 150 towards the agreement of the... Yes, that's captured in the grants line item. In the grants. Under it's coming revenue. in as a grant? That's how you... Okay. Yeah, that's how... But it's how 150. It. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And the original agreement was we were going to split this 50 50. Yes. Correct. But we spent 202. We're budgeting the entire amount, and the school is reimbursing us. No, you said of the salaries, 202 on top of the 476, 015. Yeah, that's just sal salaries. There's also equipment charges and uh, various other charges to the pool. You know, that the <clears throat> in last year's uh, budget, we had only budgeted for half the year of the program costs. So for this year, we're budgeting program costs for the full, for the full year. Which to is the 202 that, number that you yes, got? Yes, exactly. That is on top of what was budgeted last year. So what was budgeted last year, that was in the budget, and then the increased piece to account for the $300,000 co total cost of the program. Lou, I do have a question on why you would have delinquent taxes down 300000 Does that have anything to do with some people came because of the new tax laws 
and paid their taxes in December, so it shows in the revenue of last year and not in this year or no? It's com completely separate things, yeah. Okay, they, then yeah. why? Uh, state tax appeals, because the state tax court is, um, they're allowed to, when they, they, they sometimes hold these appeals that when they finally adjudicate an amount and it, they, they apply it retroactively, when if, if that, um, if that appealant um, is due a credit, due, due a, a refund, it has to come out of our delinquent tax revenue. So it's not just for what hits the current taxes, it, 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 it applies for retroactive, um, and that has to be taken out, out, out of our delinquent tax revenue. So normally, historically, for the last couple of years, we have uh, started and, and have been within our shooting range of what we have budgeted, and then we get a couple tax state tax appeals from the state tax court that then we have to hit and because of, of um, cause that's how they were adjudicated. Can we go back to the question sure. about the 202000 Is the cost mm -hmm. for the program, the shared service with the school, 202000 No, the total cost of the program is $300,000. $300,000? Yes. The school is reimbursing us? 150000 So what is the two hundred two? It's the salaries, the salary portion. That doesn't make it a 50-50 share. So either you're hiring too many, or what you're putting also on here that I'm assuming is, unless there's another line item for equipment and all that other stuff. Yeah, we, we need to equip them. But that shouldn't be in salaries. Why is that in salaries? That's just the piece for the salaries. So the 202 is just for the piece of the salaries? Yes, sir. Which we agreed that we were going to do 300,000. 300,000. So, yeah. so how do you... There are, there's other increases in the police uniform line that accounts for it. There are... I think we're talking about two different things, unless I'm mistaken. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right now, we're just talking about salaries. Mm -hmm. let, let me ask the question. Mm -hmm. Is the total cost of the project $300,000? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Or is the, the $300,000 reflective of all of the salary plus any of the increases that you're mentioning? Of the $300,000? No, no, no. I, my, I didn't my, understand my question. question is... We're saying, you're saying the total cost of the project is $300,000. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is the entire cost of the project actually $300,000? All in. All in. Everything. Staffing, salary increase, equipment. uniform, yes. equipment. Yes. Well, They're giving us 150 doing... back. Correct. Okay. But then They're giving us 150 we... back. If not, we'd only be itemizing for 52. Right. 202. Okay. Minus, th minus 150 is 52. The total cost, there's other costs involved in the program. It's 300,000. You have matching taxes, you have equipping them, you have some training. So it's the program is 352. How you make that adjustment no, no, is no. in your so, standard so what, it, so what it is is there's $100,000 or actually $98,000 uh, yes. that is sitting in other line items. Yes, in all other costs. That isn't in that line item, and they're giving us 150 back. Oh, I see. You're saying that the the total we're not paying 202. Yes. The total is 200. The salary Correct. plus Correct. is 202. The salary we plus. Are, we are only yeah. paying 150. We right? are. Correct. We're getting 150 yes. back in the grant. Okay. There's other costs above the 202. Equipment, training, yeah, matching taxes, that. That's things of that yes. nature. Right. Okay. So how does that make that three hundred all in? Because what they're doing is they're taking the the total one fifty and aligning it to the salary line item and leaving the balance. So the balance of that is ninety eight thousand dollars. We have the cost total cost of salary is two hundred two right. minus one hundred and fifty. So actually, how is that we are paying? What We're paying fifty two thousand dollars for salary. And ninety eight thousand in, in cost. In, in, the in other expenses. Expense. Okay. They're paying 150000 in salary. Yes. We're paying fifty two in salary. The extra. 98000 in all other costs. It's yes. the way we agreed to do it for it. numerous reasons. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Okay. Okay. Right, Lou? Yes, sir. I mean, we, we have to account for the full cost of the program all in, and then they reimburse us based on... We understood the that, but the, the figures uh, uh, didn't line confusing. up properly. Yeah, no. because that that's just the salary piece. There is definitely other pieces when we come to the police budget that you'll see that they have a separate line item that's specific we to, that now. 
to the uh, SLEO program. It'll be hard to explain this to the public. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, well, <laughs> yes, no, it's not hard to explain. It's just, there's a lot of other costs. It's like an employee. Well, when an employee asks, uh, when we hire somebody for $40,000, we know that the cost of that person is 65, 70. We know it's not 40. It's just like anything else. There's anybody who's been an employer, you know. It's not just his salary that costs you. Okay. Uh, moving on to go over our current debt service. Um, this is a breakdown uh, between 17 and 18 where our debt service is at. Um, that bottom box totals about $69.5 million. Um, that is as of the beginning of this year. Uh, now, the way we carry debt, uh, statutorily we're allowed to borrow up to 3.5% of our total assessed value. Um, we are well below that. We're currently at 1.019% of our total assessment value. So we're in pretty good shape there. What are we allowed to borrow? I'm sorry, could you repeat that figure? 3.5%, 238 million if you wanted to. Wouldn't recommend it, but that's the maximum allowable. Just wanted to show the deviation, how far below we are. Nice job. Thanks. So that leaves us at this year with a $0.39 cent per $100 of assessed value for our rate. Um, just to give you a quick breakdown of all Monmouth County towns, this is the 2017 numbers. We were at number 20 out of 53 towns. Um, with our new rate, that would move us up to number 17 on this chart. Unless they went down. What's that? Unless they went down. Unless they went down. So uh, we're looking at a 39 cent per thousand. Per hundred. Well, okay, but what would you say? Um, have you spoken to the tax office? I mean, what, what are we up? Three, four percent in our values? Correct. About four percent. What? Yes, that's correct. It was about four percent. About four percent in, in our total assessed values. taxable properties or four percent in the average value of a home? They're different questions. It was 4% on the, to the total rateables, uh, total all rateable classes, but the, the residential classification did increase as well. Right. So if, if your home stayed the same value on your tax, you're looking at about a little over a 2% decrease. Potentially in, about $22. In your municipal taxes this yes. year. Yes. If your home went up, like my home I think went up in, in assessed value about one and a quarter percent. So I'll be looking at a slight decrease in my municipal taxes this year with what we have now, correct? That is correct. Okay. And that's this slide. Um, it's 0.007 cent decrease above the 2000 rate of 0.397. Uh, as we said, it's about a $22 per year savings on the average home. That's using the median price. <clears throat> yes. Yes, sir. Um, going into the new positions, uh, these are the ones that are, um, are being recommended by me. Uh, after discussions with the departments, we'll get more into detail with each of the departments um, as they come give their presentations. Uh, but we're looking for an administrative assistant in the Fire Bureau. Uh, Chief Lewis can explain more about that, but I know he's had uh, drastic turnover with just having part-time personnel, um, mechanic welder for public works. Uh, and then I, was, I discussed two patrolmen for the police department as additions, although in speaking with uh, Chief Kudrick, he had asked about substituting one of those positions for the class two program, which would actually be a significant benefit for us. So, um, you yeah, know, as long as the dollar amount stays the same or is less, I would recommend that so it's one police officer and one class two <clears throat> um, or however many class twos we can get for that dollar amount but oh, they they would be part-time employees so no. Benefits so they're not at the maximum amount that they're allowed to hire in class twos based on their 
Because uh, that was always a bone of contention. I know he's had a few, and um, apparently the PBA is very cooperative with him for allowing use. Um, in addition, we are talking about making some changes with the court where we may need to provide some additional security. And generally, the class twos are used for that. So, something we discussed. <coughs> well, I was no, it's going to happen. Talks, it's it's, it's going to happen. They took. You know, in the budget talks with Brian and Lou, you know, we went into this pretty in depth. We're going to probably need an extra day of the court. Um, yeah. And with that, it's going to need either special twos or or overtime at the end of the day. So, and I'd like to see it happen. I've discussed. Some is I don't. I, I think it's going to happen by. by I think it's going to happen because just the nature of how much increase in court cases are happening. So I think it's just going to happen by choice. Now we would like it, you know, because of what they're doing, but it's just going to happen. I uh, I think we had we went from 350 drug arrests to 750. That's a big number, and we're not alone for me speaking to some other municipalities, some police officers, some prosecutors from some other town so it's not a it's all over the place so I think anything we do to help try to combat the drug problem I just think every one of us is a step in the right direction so okay so that's the end of the municipal portion then if we move on to the sewer utility uh, it's pretty consistent with um, 2017 numbers uh, just to review what what was laid out in 2017, uh, the only wide variation was under miscellaneous. There was uh, an increase in the revenue collected uh, over what was anticipated. This was attributed mostly due to the connection fees um, that were added on to the system. So that's what the increase in that number was. So now the connection fees are being paid. Now those people are users. Correct. So now there's a quarterly fee being paid by them. Yes, sir. Does that equate to the same addition in revenue um, for them now being users as opposed to the upfront connection fee? I mean, I think a residential user, where are we at, $144 a quarter? Mm -hmm. Correct? Correct. So $144 a quarter is what, $584 a year? Mm -hmm. Correct? Correct. No, I'm losing it. It's 576. Yeah, I got some issues. I'm getting older. I had a heart attack. You know, things happen in life. Um, so is that going to equate to the same? Uh, uh, I don't have to have that answer today, but when we get into discussing the sewer, I'd like to know because as much as we've went back and forth over the sewer, um, we have lowered it $50 a quarter, I believe, in the last four years. And... Uh, you know, it was a pretty contentious debate at times, but we lowered it $200 over the last four or five years, and and we're still increasing revenue. So I'd like to know if we can decrease it again or or what. I'm going to need to know part of what we're, where we're going and how much we paid towards the sewers going to Freewood Acres. How much of the fees we've already paid for engineering, all the engineering fees are already paid for. And they were already paid for on the sewer fund. Yes, for sir. the design, we will still have the, the management side of it. Okay. So I'd like to know dollar for dollar what they were, what we anticipate they're going to be. Because okay. that may tell us also whether or not there's going to be some extra money there. And I'm not saying to use it all. Because some intangibles will arise. In a, in a, as much as I have confidence in the professionals, <clears throat> it's a pretty big project. And in any big project comes intangibles. Um, but I'd really like to know those numbers when we discuss the sewer. Okay? Okay. Uh, these were the uh, appropriations for 17. Um, there was 170,000 in, re 170, in reserves, uh, $6.24 in the balance that was canceled. That was due to the unexpended debt service by law. Has to be canceled out at the end of the year. I <laughs> should fight over that 624 people. One day in court. <laughs> uh, so the um, here's the debt service. You see an increase um, from 17 to 18. Um, 
most of, well, the MCIA capital lease that's due to the jet truck that was purchased out of the current fund. Basically, we're just reimbursing our current fund from, from this. So that's what that difference is attributed to. How long is that lease for? Is that a few year lease? Is it like a three hundred thousand dollar truck? I Low? It's more than that. I believe it's uh, they, um, they average. I think it's uh, I think it's uh, stretched out to seven years. Stretched out to seven years. So we're looking at a five hundred thousand dollar truck. This payment actually here was to catch up for 15, 16, and 17. So in future years, the, the, this payment will actually be about $15,000 less. So there's another $15,000 we just found, right, Lou? Sir. Okay, just checking, Lou. Okay, so here's our um, proposed for 2018. Um, it's, there's, you'll notice a decrease in the salary and wage line. There was a full-time employee that um, has separated from Howell, so we're not carrying that full-time salary now. And instead, we've had several employees with, <clears throat> excuse me, a portion of their salary is attributed to sewer. Um, for example, in the tax collector's office, since all of them do a portion of collecting sewer utilities, a portion of their salaries are attributed to this budget. Um, there is significant increase in other expenses. Uh, that's MRSA, the Matasquan River Regional Sewer Authority, had a uh, big jump in their bulk rate. So that's the reason for that change. <clears throat> so at the end of the day, the budget is remaining the same um, at $7.4 million. Um, And then here's a review of the surplus for the sewer, which at the end of 18, we're expecting a $1.2 million surplus for the utility. <clears throat> and that's how much more for 2017? The 17 surplus started at $2.9 million. 970 was used. Um, in the budget, leaving a subtotal of 1.9. Um, there was 381,000 regenerated. And how much is being used? 2.339 is what we ended up with for the end of the year. And we are proposing to use 1.2. Oh. Is this how we're planning on spending the money that we're gonna, as we're building this project at Freewood Acres? Is that what the extra expenses are going to? I'm just asking. Yes. Yes. And that is all I have for the overall budget. Um, next, I brought in the, um, I can go over the manager's budget, finance budget, which there's minor, minor changes to. And then we can get into the Bureau of Fire Prevention. Um, for administrative and executive, there's a change, an increase of $6,000. Um, that's attributed to the stipend paid to the deputy manager. Other than that, there's no other changes to my budget from last year. And that's page J1. Yes. You have under you one, two, three, four other employees, right? 
One, two, three, four. Jill, Kristen, Steven, Allison. One thing I never understood is why in your line item, the specialized expenses of the 52000 which I know are not for those four employees, in your line item versus where the or the other ser where these specialized uh, services go to. Uh, I'll ask Lou to comment on what is what exactly is charged that, but frequently there's a lot of things that cover multiple departments. They're usually encompassed within the manager's budget. Uh, that way, we're not having several different line items. Uh, just for example, one other issue that I was talking about during the the manager budget budget hearings car washes. Each department attributes a small amount of money to car washes and believe it or not there's different rates being paid. Um, so to encompass them all into one budget and maximize the economy of scale and say you know one dollar amount for all the departments to use. But I'll, I'll ask Lou to comment what, what's been charged on that. Absolutely. Line. What what has been as as laid out on page three in the uh, in the uh, budget booklet? Um, what's what's being budgeted for is um, a lot of our uh, human resources type expenses, as far as our uh, drug and alcohol testing, our um, evaluations, and uh, uh, sorry, psychological evaluations, pre-employment physicals, um, cost of CDL training, uh, seminars, uh, trainings for for other items such as uh, bloodborne pathogens, right to know, reasonable suspicion, sexual harassment, and uh, as well as uh, paying for the ability to have our uh, time and time and attendance system. So okay. these so these line items, CDL training, all that that would not be in any other departments line correct. item. Correct. Correct. So it's all being handled out of human resources. Correct. Gotcha. Out of administration. Yes. Correct. Can I ask a question? Sir. You're asking for 52.5 in specialized expenses, but I only see 18,000. I mean, what was the expended was 23,000 in 2017. Why rise to $29,000? Oh, I'm sorry, the final was. 42.5, but what 12.31 says encumbered was 23. Correct. Well, there's a $19,000 difference there, and then there's another 10000 difference in how much is requested. What is it? Help me. The amount that was approved in the budget last year was the $52,500. $10,000 of it was transferred out to account for other departments, uh, line items and only approximately $24,000 was spent from that line item. Um, I guess uh, the, the, um, for that line item, the uh, frequency of, I guess, the amount of things that, that happen within that line item, the, the need. So um, if you feel that this line item could use a reduction, we can absolutely entertain it. Good. I'd say entertain it. I mean, that's one of your special appropriations in November and December, at least one line item that goes to another? Yep. Okay. Uh, and that's why we always push for the zero-based budgeting. I know it's a complicated uh, process to go through, but this is exactly what happens. Oh, I recommend we just cut 10000 We didn't spend it. If they say no extra money is needed, why an extra $10,000 on that line? You said that 10000 went somewhere to other departments. Mm -hmm. For what? Correct. The same training? It, 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 um, not mean, necessarily specifically, but it was to enter, t it was to cover other shortfalls in, 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 in other departments. So it wasn't for a, one specific thing. Like Peter Cole, kind of? So, kind of like that. And I suggest we take 10000 out of there. Mm -hmm. Anybody against it? No. No. Okay. But aren't don't all of the departments have line items for training? If I remember last year, they yes, all had line items for training. Mm. Yes. Some of the the training that's included in in the manager, it's it's um, 
some of the departments have training that they go to do um, their own that might be specific to their line of work and the training that we have is for the training that we provide for the entire civilian workforce I, as I said you know sexual harassment the you know uh, right to know bloodborne pathogens stuff of that nature do we do that training in-house or we bring people to do it uh, I think sometimes it's a little bit of both combination, combination. Like flex spend. Depending on the the topic, sometimes we uh, sometimes we rely on our, our risk advisor and uh, PMA management come in and help provide that. And sometimes, if it's say maybe fire related, we have our in house staff do it. So it it, it kind of depends on the topic. Just just a question: Have mm -hmm. you ever looked at the trainings that they have at Rutgers? They offer those trainings free. If you have you absolutely know, a something, number. absolutely something that we could look into. Absolutely, that's a good idea, man. And let's cut ten thousand off there. Why don't we start there? And there's an increase in postage. Mm -hmm. Correct. We had uh, spent um, almost uh, almost seventy thousand dollars for last year. Postage is something that you know it, it's something that we can never get a I guess a, a hard hard no, hard by number on. As if you know if there's certain times in the year. I mean, obviously we have our sewer mailings, our tax billings. But let um, me hold you off there. Sure. How many other departments have postage in their line item? Nobody. This this the, covers the, the whole covers town. The entire town. The, this covers the entire town. The sewer utility has a line item for postage, yeah. but this covers for the entire town. And the clerk's office? Right. The, the clerk. Everybody. All but the clerk's office has a line item for postage? That's specific to the elections. Just for elections? That's for elections, specific to elections. Do you do a one-year look back, or do you do an average of the past three years? Pretty much a, a one-year look back. I say we take another five thousand from there. I don't think that's a good idea. You don't because think it, that? because it was raised because it was used, right? It would what? It was short last year, so that's why it was raised. Yeah, but it went from sixty-five to seventy-five. How much was it short? Four thousand. Well, then take five thousand. I said did. Take five thousand. That's what I just said. You want? Listen. Do you have the breakdown of each department's usage of, of postage? Like, do you know how much the senior uses or how much? No, because the way the way it, it's done is we um, we pay a check to Pitney Bowes and basically is an amount put onto our envelope uh, stamper, if you will. And then anytime we are we are um, sending out po you know sending out mail, we run it through and it. A decline balance is off of the amount that we put in there, and then so to get specifically, I mean, obviously, tax bills, sewer is a big um, is a big uh, portion of it. Um, if there's any, um, I would think the clerk's office bears something, you know, with whatever they're sending out with certified ordinances and 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 the like. Um, and if I guess um, community development needs to send anything out as far as the 200 foot letters and whatnot I, I think to that question my next question would be is everything brought here to get mailed out or are there are there stamp units at individual locations the only stamping unit that the township has is in the municipal clerk's office so all the mail comes here right is there any way that you could dedicate you know a specific number when you're stamping to be able to identify which department is coming it, it's using it uh we could certainly within the unit itself we can certainly look into speak with pitney bows to see if the, there's that type of um i mean it's it's just a matter of retrieved. setting it up sure because there's really no management oversight you right. know I, i'm going to give you an example i love receiving it but i i think it's unnecessary so every month i don't know if senior the rest letter. of the council like the senior yeah. letter, senior letter. Yeah. the dollar something to mail that that little package to us. Yeah. I mean, e email it to us. Right. Well, 
Well, I can pick it up here, right on the coffee table when at a meeting, right? So that just what sets off the wheels in motion. Where's the oversight? I mean, it's a nice courtesy, but, you know, if we could exclude some of these courtesies. I, if I can comment, you know? we are making some uh, operational changes okay. internally uh, to use technology more um, in the tax and sewer office was one that they would always mail things out and they've since been directed to email or fax, do that kind of thing. Um, and I think by cutting the, the dollar amount is how we control exactly. the process. We even know, send it in our package when you send the senior thing to us in our package when you send it, when you bring them to us on the, on the Friday. It's, I mean, it's not a lot. No, it's not a lot. It's I'm just, just a, one example. It's just something little, you know? I, well, that's what they used to do because we we have a we all have a mailbox down in the clerk's office yeah. that they uh, that's when Carol Zor and before her I don't remember that lady's name but they would do they physically walk. Do you work on streamlining and some things? <laughs> I'm for cutting five thousand for the postage. How about that? Sure. We all good? Yep. Okay, we'll see uh, next year what it looks like. But I think it would also be beneficial to see if there could be a code put in. By department, so that mm. you can then monitor that we for can next year. We have to see if the equipment is capable of it. It is. It is. I know it's as part of the. It is. I I do know as part of the uh, Freewood Acres project um, when we do uh, start um, introducing those ordinances, we will need to send uh, letters out to those local mm -hmm. property owners. So it, it's you know. We understand. Something that will need to be taken care of. <coughs> See where we are come, come September. Clerk's office, where we got with nothing with the town council, what with, with the clerk's office. Did you want to go line by line now or do you want to have the departments that are present? No, I don't need uh, if there's nothing here we need to talk about, why would we I don't need her here. If there's nothing we need to talk about. Where we at? The part right. request is three ninety seven. Last year, amount of cover was 374. The additions came in what normal salary increases that are already in the contracts. Am, am I correct? Where are you? In the clerk's office. Hey, what, hey. Are, what are the increases for? would be step raises. So salary just normal increase is $5,490, correct? So the clerk's office total is up $4,775. Where do you see that? No, On page not. two. Page two. That, yeah, that's for total total uh, salary and wages and, and other expenses. Page, page two. So it's up one and a quarter percent the clerk's office. I don't need to talk about anything there if nobody else does. Nope. Financial administration, what are we looking at there? It's the well, same as well. The uh, salary and wages are only attributed to the, um, the reserve for the potential uh, contract settlements. We know we're going to settle them. So right here, we also have training and education, right? That is correct. Yeah, we got f almost 5,000 in there. Yeah, and that would be department specific. Um, you know, I know uh, Paul Bodine is attending various classes for his certifications right now, but that's specific to that department. And necessary. Yeah, a lot of it's statutorial, right? Huh? Yes, sir. 
IT. What do we got going up there and why? I have IT scheduled for our next meeting. Okay. And the bulk of that software maintenance, which we know maintenance contracts are going up, correct? Is that where that's coming from? Is it new or is it I, just increases? I have them scheduled for our next meeting. They could probably Anything best answer fine. that. Yeah. I have the fire bureau scheduled for tonight. Let's go. That's what page is that? <laughs> I can help you out with that. Which book? Uh, which book, which page? J9. He's on the long sheets. J9 get them up here. Yeah. J9 on the long sheets. Let's get them up. Page 102 in the budget booklet uh, with the, all the requests. Lou, if you could do that every time we start to talk about something, Absolutely. it's very difficult going back and forth. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm sorry, it was J9. J9. J9 and 102. 106. We can make the print big enough for the unit. 106? Yes. Did it, did, did, I, did I say 102? I meant to say 106. I, I apologize. 102. No worries. It's all right. Thank you. Yeah. Did you mean 102? Or 106? Good evening. Good evening. Hi, gentlemen. I gave you all a little packet um, just so that it gives you a little bit of background and history of the Fire Bureau, which is really just background of what we do. Um, you can read it as your leisure. Obviously, I don't expect you to look through it now. It really doesn't pertain to what we're discussing. Just to give you a little idea of what we do, some of you know what we do and some of you may not. So I uh, just wanted to give you that. Good idea. Thank you. Um, I know our big uh, discussion tonight is the fact that we've requested to have a full-time administrative assistant in our office, something we've been lacking for a little bit of time. Um, as uh, the manager kind of alluded to, over since the fall of 2016, we've replaced that part-time position five times. So as you can imagine, it goes along with a period of not having anybody going through interviews hiring, putting that person in the seat, training, and then losing them again. Um, twice they were lucky enough to secure a job in the township as a full-time employee, which is wonderful for them, but not so wonderful for my office. Um, they're obviously good employees because they're still here. A um, couple of them left for full-time jobs in other places. And again, good for them, but not so good for me. Um, so I'm asking for a full-time position so that I can eliminate the need to constantly be covering the office with my inspectors who are not out on the road doing their job, obviously trying to make the township a safer place to live or make sure it stays a safe place to live and work and shop because um, we're basically in every, every one of the stores and businesses in this town. Uh, I know there's always the thought of money when it comes to these positions, so I've kind of put together a little bit of idea of the, ultimately, that position doesn't generate an income, but it's going to generate an income because people are going to be able to do what their jobs are in other ways. Um, Chief, before you do that, just why I'm thinking. So when people are interviewed, they're being interviewed knowing it's a part-time job. Correct. For whatever reason, they, now they want to go to full-time. We get that. But does the, did the, did the part-time hours suffice the work level? No, because uh, we have to, we kind of make the hours adjust to somewhat of their availability when we find a good person, and then it doesn't fill, they may only be working four days a week, and we're here five days a week, so we have to cover those hours. Uh, sometimes they're covering, a, you know, a half a morning and all the afternoon, or vice versa, because they can only work 25 hours a week, and we're here 35, so there's 10 hours minimum a week that they, we have to cover, plus Lunches. So we're really here 40 hours a week. The office is only 40 hours a week that we're covering. So the bottom line is the, the part-time just wasn't working. They didn't, you know, that, that why they left doesn't really matter. It's just whether the part-time versus full-time. Right. And, and it's some of it has to do with money. Uh, we increased the um, amount of money we paid. We've gone to a higher rate. Originally, we were using a seasonal person, and that was started at $10 an hour, and that wasn't working, so we enticed, made it a little bit more attractive by raising the hourly rate. And it's they're looking for either a full-time position with benefits, or sometimes they're not looking for the benefits; they're just looking for to work more hours. So, 
I suspect the continuity of the job is impaired as well. Well, it becomes very difficult because we do have a, a computer program that's pretty much, um, which all the departments use, but mm -hmm. if you're not familiar with it, you, it takes you a little while to learn it. And then, of course, we're generating invoices and generating uh, permits and generating certificates and so on and so forth. All of that takes time to learn. So it's not a, it's not a one day, here, here you are, we're going to teach you how to do it. It's usually two or three weeks. Sure. Uh, myself and the lieutenant uh, spending time with this person, getting them. Right. Taking your time. Yeah. So, so how many people do you think you went through in the last year well, since we spoke about this? Well, it's last been, year. like I say, since fall of 2016, we've hired five 16, different 17. individuals. Okay, five, okay. So that's uh, Not a year and a half. Yeah. You know, so. We spoke about this pretty much at length last year, as I recall. Do you think that, uh, I'm sure it would bring efficiency to your department. Do you think it would add revenue? I think that it would be allow my guys to go out and do the job they do, and the revenue generation is going to be because even today we're finding businesses that aren't following the process of getting the right approvals through the town to move into where they're moving into. So not only are we generating another inspection for ourselves, we're, we're generating the necessary approvals through the mm -hmm. town, the CCO process, the zoning check, the, so on and so forth, to make sure the right businesses are moving in the right areas. So mm -hmm. it's generating a income there, too, so not just in our office. Mm -hmm. I see last year we approved 408000 and you're asking for 425 this year, but encumbered was only 380 Was that because now they didn't have an employee? How, why was encumbered at 28000 less than what was asked for? And I don't have those numbers right in front of me. I don't know if Luke can help me out with that. I mean, was it in salaries? I mean, uh, I'm looking in here, uh, and I'm not seeing too many huge variations in the expense side. Um, I know one thing we did last year, and I did beginning of this year, although Lou has changed it, is I included last year's budget proposal to put in the full-time and held the monies available for the part-time position, which was about $15,000. I don't know if that's the difference. This year, he removed that from the budget, the, uh, the 15000 for the part-time position, and held the full-time position monies in the salaries. I don't know if that's the difference. Well, last year, I'm looking at 39000 was approved for part-time. 10000 was transferred out, and only 22000 was encumbered. So that's a $17,000 difference right there. Um, Lou, part of the increase in health, was that you anticipating a, a full-time person in this department and the health costs that will be encumbered with it? Correct. All of the costs that are within our health benefits, all of the costs. All of the costs that are reflective in our health benefits are reflective of all of the new personnel re Requests. So if any new personnel requests are not granted by the governing body, we can remove those increases from health benefits as well. It's the 44 plus thousand, right? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's, yeah, well, when you add it all up, but, you, I, you know, it's a, you need continuity. We, you know, we know if you don't have continuity, the lack of efficiency is... It's just not there in, in any department, anything. It's not just in yours. So, you, know, you have a special little niche. And I'm sorry, I misspoke. The, the amount was 35000 plus, not forty four. I read the wrong line. I'm sorry. Would having a full-time person decrease overtime? It will not affect the overtime increase or decrease. It won't change the overtime. The only over well, the overtime that we are currently paying out is the on-call um, in fire investigator, and any time we are doing special events where someone has to do the special event after hours, and most of the time we try to cover our public education events by our part-time person, so it really doesn't cost us the overtime. But there are times when we need multiple people available to do that event. So, uh, but the uh, the overtime is pretty much contractual based on the fire investigator being available. Thank you. I'm good. Yep. I'm you okay? I'm good. 
Okay, you get them. For her. Are we doing a uh, capital with, or that we're going to do separately? We'll do that separately. You're going to have more. So you're going to come back. To capital. I guess I was told that's that's how it's been handled in the past. Okay. Not necessarily. I I'd, I'd say okay. the ones you're going to have here. Let's. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's. Right. Except for DPW, I want him back again. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. What page is that capital look? 109 starts on. So we're good on the employee for the fire bureau. Correct. Thank you. Yes. The uh, fire uh, bureau capital starts on page 109, and as well as it's there's there's a separate listing that you have in your packets as well that's capital related. So what do we have here? Our project number one. I don't know where you're at on that. I'm looking at it. Project number one is uh, replacement of the fire safety house, which we had a discussion on last year. And we've been uh, uh, looking at this quite closely, trying to figure out which way to go. I did write it up as a capital improvement project. Um, I should let you know also that since that time frame, we have started working on the um, firefighters grant. There's a fire prevention and safety grant that is opening on Monday, and we'll be submitting this project to that. We are working with the uh, Mazer uh, group to uh, write our, our proposal for the grant, and uh, we're trying to get everything in order for that, to move forward with that. There is a, I believe it's a 5% match on this project um, that we would be responsible for if awarded, but um, we are moving forward to try to get this through a grant. How much is the grant? It would be whatever the project is, um, minus the townships. Uh, what are you expecting the cost to be? Uh, around 130000 I think we talked. So, look, I assume it's not in the grant you had in the presentation, correct? Correct. Correct. Yeah, we haven't even. It says 110000 We're just trying to make sure. Right. right. So, so we would, if the township had a match requirement, we, we would actually have to add the match requirement to the budget. So it was $130,000, we'd have to match $6,500. It says $110,000. How am I doing, Excuse me, Mr. Walsh. What? It says $110,000. It says $110,000. I was looking at my paper. It's you said one thirty. dollars I know, 5, but it, I, wanted, well, I think it'd be nice to... One ten. I asked the man himself. I didn't look down. Sorry. It and you said ten. it was a 5% match, Chief? I believe it is a 5% match. So yeah, then, five. yes, so then we'd have to add 5500 to the budget. When does um, I, I said you're gonna you said you were gonna look at it on Monday? Uh, what kind of time frame are you looking at in terms of an answer? You know whether or not you get the grant. Sorry. The grant actually closes uh, the 12th of March, so it's a short time frame wow. for us to apply. Um, we've been working pretty aggressively on this for the last couple months in preparation for the opening of the grant. Um, so we're trying to do our fact finding, do March, our risk so assessments. And looking at a 60 day window to find out. Yeah. No, we won't find out then. We may, it may be a year before we March, find out. So, oh, so we won't even know we this don't, summer. We won't. Yeah, we may not know. How many awards? One hundred. There's a hundred. Oh. There's a hundred people awarded the grant nationwide. Oh. Nationwide. Nationwide. It's, 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 uh, this is part of the AFG grant through FEMA and Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. So specifically to fire prevention and, and safety. So you wouldn't That's expect us to put it in this year's budget, only that if you did get the grant, we would do the five percent match, correct? I have no problem with the 5% match. I have no issue. That's fine. Good luck. And good, good luck. Job. I'm sure you'll dot your eyes across your teeth. I, I, I have faith in you, gentlemen. Yeah. Working on it. Okay? I know, I know many of you have seen the current trailer. I know, Mayor, you actually participated in an exercise. Yes, I have. Um, oh, that's just trailer? one of the many exercises that we would actually do with the, with the newer trailer um, to incorporate everything as a whole. Right now, we kind of piecemeal things together to make sure. things a little bit more updated. Beautiful sort of technology. Trip. It is. And I remember we had conversation that you were going to talk to the fire districts as a shared service. I guess there was no interest or wasn't there? They, they were all discussed it, and there was no interest in them assisting us with purchase at this time. I'll revisit that when I schedule the meeting with the fire districts. 
Oh, should hmm? be interesting. Yeah, I should I'll revisit that topic when I they discussed try it or they were discussed dead. <laughs> Which word did you uh, use to solve? Either either one probably would I'm be. I'm just trying to <laughs> trying to be focused here. Okay. I did bring it up at a couple successive meetings, so maybe they were tired of hearing about it. Did they say why there was no interest? They, they, uh, it's alluded to me, not specifically said, but they didn't have the room to be able to afford it in their budget. The five of them. Correct. Hmm. Okay. And I think it's best if we talk to them and let them explain it directly. I would be interested in hearing the reason the five of them could not put in. $22,000 each? Over a 10-year period of time, $2,200 a that year? That just doesn't If you sound... bonded for it and paid for it capital improvements, is that correct, Lou? Is that I, pretty, I don't think that's is that a pretty safe number? I would say so, absolutely. This benefits all of the schools, the, the children, I mean, adults, it, it, the seniors. It's all right. Well, we, I appreciate we should have you that not discussion. letting go of this and, and going forward. Will we it. be discussing it with them or just you? Uh, from our council meeting the other night, I'm going to be trying to set up a meeting with representatives from each of the districts mm -hmm. to discuss some of the future options. So I'll, I'll bring this topic up again and mm -hmm. see where it goes. Thank you. Good luck on that grant. I hope it helps. We're all good, right? Thank you. What else are we looking for? Seven well, good luck on the grant, but I hope that we could try and cajole yeah. <clears throat> the fire departments to assist in this process. A little cooperation is always very nice. Oh. Right, you're asking for here? a 2008 Chevy Trailblazer to be replaced with 110,000 yes. miles? Yes, sir. One of the finest vehicles ever made in the United States of America. Oh, my God. 110,000 miles. I would think it has at least eight to ten more years of useful life. It's it's working, but it's getting tired. Uh, Lieutenant Proc now drives it. Kind of like us. Kind of like us, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Upfitter cost. What's 7,000 on top of the 29? Because of what we do. Because of what you do? The communications we because need. We sit mm -hmm. on the side of the road. We need some sort of lighting package to protect us as well as uh, guys to be prepared for do their job when they get out on the street. So, um, In addition to that, we've also, this year, we went mobile with our, our computer system you know, on the tablets. So our inspectors are now conducting inspections from the field, doing their paperwork, and everything right from their cars, mm -hmm. which is reducing the amount of time that's in, their, in the office as well, mm -hmm. so, which is also a good thing. Brian, what's your recommendation here? I have not reviewed all the capital requests yet, as I was expecting we were doing okay. separately. So why don't we get back on this one? That's it, right? Just those two capital. That's it. But probably we are, yes. Pretty easy. We're done. <laughs> yeah. well, Thank you, gentlemen. Done. Yeah, yeah, I know. We're done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, while they're here, why have them come back for for two capital? You know what I'm saying? That's why I was asking for direction at the council meeting how you wanted to handle. Get them in, get them out. <laughs> no, so, no, we can come back oh, to talk to us about one thing that we can talk about now for five minutes, right? Exactly. Nobody argued. For all of us. We're not arguing. So Public Works has many cost centers, but we'll we'll start with their uh, road department, which is pretty much their uh, their biggest uh, cost center. Page. Uh, the booklet page is 113, 113, and Public Works uh, starts on the J sheets on J10. It's right under Municipal Prosecutor. J10. Thank you. Department of Public Works. Thank you. asking Lou if they have multiple budgets is there one budget that it all rolls up into no they're they're all uh, in separate cost centers because that's how based on the state's flexible chart of accounts is set up so for example they have uh, vehicle maintenance and building and grounds even though it, no, it, yeah be... I, I, I understand I was just mm -hmm. sometimes it's just easier to look at it all at one sure and it, it's quite possible that in for us yeah in uh, mr. Novello's uh, 
packet that he handed out, it, he, I believe he may have combined some of it, maybe? <laughs> oh, no. Um, I'm sorry. I did break it out per, per item, uh, as I thought that was the proper way to do it. It is, but it, in going forward, though, if this uh, a department that has, just for me, and I don't know, please, it's up for discussion, but a department that has multiple um, departments within it, if there's one budget, one general budget that they all roll, roll up into so we could actually see a full salary line, you know, sure. or those other line items, it might be just a little bit easier for us and then go into the individual ones as well? That's something that I can work with Mr. Novello on. I, I believe he actually might have created a document during our uh, manager hearings. Okay. Um, so I, I we can definitely work on that. cheat sheet, for lack of a better word. Um, unfortunately, it does contain my capital on the bottom. I was just trying to see uh, what I was looking for, and I do, I do have one copy. I can make copies of this to pass out if, if you would like it. It does show it's the 2017 the salaries and the 2018 salaries. Actually, I wouldn't mind having it if it's not a problem to make copies. Well, can we have that here also? We do. On, on J10, it shows the 2017 salaries in the 2018. I mean, it's what I'm looking at. Yes, but this, this yeah, but shows all of them. This that's is what I guess we're looking department. for. Okay. I have no problem. Glad you had that, Paul. Right off the bat, look at. Uh, do you want to do presentation for us first, or do you want us to start asking you questions? Well, uh, I'm here for you folks, whatever y y you would like. I did prepare a presentation. I, I copied a presentation that was used in the past. I thought that would be the format that you desired, and I'm willing to make any changes uh, going forth. So, I mean, I, I can blow through this, and then we can. Go through the numbers however you want to do it. Let's do that. Okay. Um, I won't worry, but you all know what Public Works does. Uh, one of the things we're trying to do is improve uh, the efficiency, the way we do serve the town. Um, some of the things we're also looking at is improving our maintenance of the parks and improving our energy efficiencies. God bless. Um, thank you. I'm over on salaries and wages. That's just a breakdown of, of how we're we're broken out and the numbers of personnel we have. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. On the next Thank sheet, you. where it says Hal Township DPW organizational chart, that's basically what we have in 2017, our, our, our current numbers and our <coughs> current uh, structure. You turn the page, that's our 2018 proposed organization. And basically the... Um, the big change is I've added the mechanic welder in our fleet maintenance, and I've also broken our road division into two separate uh, groups, although they are still one. Uh, within the roads division, there's two distinct different types of work. We have road repair, and then we have the maintenance of the parks, the right-of-way mowing, all of those things. So I'm trying to separate that a little bit better to improve our efficiencies. Over here, uh, the next page, road department and salary and wages. Um, the way it's set up, the folks who work for buildings and grounds, with the exception of two of them, uh, the office staff, Brian and myself, we all fall under the line item of road department for our salaries and wages. Uh, last year we lost our administrative assistant and we decided not to backfill that. We spread his duties out amongst the administrative staff, uh, Brian and myself. Um, I am looking for five upgrades. I'm trying to upgrade two equipment operators to crew leaders. That's to support the splitting of the road into the roads and the open space. And also three laborers to maintainers because they are doing a lot more than their, their job title. So you're looking for five or eight? Or is that five total? Five upgrades. Five one total. additional spot, five upgrades. Okay. Yeah, I knew about the one additional spot. So you're looking for five upgrades in total? In, in this, yes. Okay. Lou? Sir. Brian, uh, are these upgrades, if they were granted, are they included in the salary increases you have? Yes. Absolutely. I'm just asking. Yes, sir. And this does show the, you know, the line item for uh, the total. Next page. Paul, before you do that, comparing other towns our size, 
Are you familiar with the number of employees? Are we lacking employees compared to other towns our size? You have 51 employees in DPW. Yes. How does I that compare? Not done, and I apologize, I have not done an analysis overall for, for public works. I have done an analysis for um, vehicle maintenance based on the number of vehicles and the type of vehicles you come up with maintenance equivalent units and it the long process, um, but I have not done that for public works. It is something that uh, I have been wanting to do, um, and it is something I will do going forward. I don't know who you compare us to. Uh, you could compare it by the lane miles, middle town, Jackson. the size of the road, number. There's there's a few different factors um, that you could could look into. The demographics of Middletown are very different from ours, yeah. though. Mm -hmm. Road miles would probably be a good start. You worked at Jackson, did you not, sir? Yes, I did. Well, that's a good... That's that's a, yeah. It's a decent comparison. We're a little right. bit bigger. We're bigger in land mass, but our, we have about the same amount of road miles because they have a lot of a lot more county roads than we do. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure about the number of residences, but uh, th their public works is, is a little bit smaller than ours. Okay. And they have some issues. We all have some issues. Yes, sir. You know, uh, no, we're just trying to get a little feel, that's all. Yeah, and, and I agree. Uh, it is something I've been meaning to do. Uh, I, I have not yet done that because um, it, is, it is much more involved. It's not one set parameter, v vehicle maintenance, fleet maintenance. Um, I, I did a couple Google searches, uh, did some research, and there are some, some ways to compare uh, that, that with hard numbers. And, and, you know, another point is this, you know, whatever your budget number is, mm -hmm. you know, how much additional outsourcing are we, are we mm -hmm. having because DPW can't either do the service, provide the service. So it's just not, you know, DPW has one, you know, uh, an $8 million budget, let's just say hypothetically. <clears throat> Within your scope of work, there's, there's another outside uh, Costs. The main cost, I guess, that would fall under contract uh, contractual support mm -hmm. for snow sure. removal. Sure. Um, and I think that's really about mm -hmm. it. Isn't Buildings it? and grounds. I saw part time down, part time encumbered to what was approved last year was a fifty one thousand dollar drop. Is that from contracting, or why would part time employment be down fifty one thousand than the year before? I, I think that was. Um, was reduced based on our actual expenditures from last year. Oh, I understand it's the actual expenditures, but why would somebody have asked for, for 104000 and only 53000 were spent? Were they not needed? Was it because there was less snow? Well, where does that come into play? 2017, like a, yeah, 2017 we did have a lighter snow right. snow event, so we, we budgeted a number based on prior prior year's activity. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm so, okay, yeah. I just, yeah. but I just see the number sure. being almost 50% less than what was asked mm -hmm. to be spent, and, sure. and it wasn't. Mm, I, think, I think there was also for some, maybe some part-time summer help for lawn mowing and stuff of the like that, that, was, that was accounted for. As okay. well, and that's why budgeting is so complex because there's a lot of unknown variables, yeah. right? So yeah, that's why I was. I was just wondering, you know, why? I mean, you asked for 104,000. 104,000 was approved in 2017. The amount encumbered was 53,000. It's a 51 thousand dollar difference. Yeah. Well, this year it will be the higher again. Well, we haven't had that much snow We're already in the middle of February. We've had enough. You had enough. <laughs> We have more cold than we've had snow. Yeah. Okay. I think, we're, I think we're more efficient today. Icy days. How's that? Yeah, don't, for, yeah, Thank you. don't forget about the mm -hmm. icy days. Efficiency drives down costs. Like I said, we're trying to be, we're trying to be more efficient. <laughs> Is there a line item for contracted, uh, let's say, snow removal? Is there a line item in this budget? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't. There is a line item within your department for it, but. Um, so far, we've been handling handling that through the snow removal trust. So um, we're charging it to basically the snow removal trust for any time Mr. Novello needs to. So use then that. it doesn't come out of the the actual budget. It's not coming out of his operating budget. Okay. We're we are taking it. What from does the snow that cost? Trust. 
I believe so far for this this storm, I think you've done. I saw two PO, maybe about around fifty thousand dollars for the year. For the year so yes. far, we, we brought them out twice. So with that trust, you pay for overtime because of the snow removal, plus the cost of salt, brine, everything Correct. like that. That comes out of the trust. Uh, the over uh, the salaries and overtime comes from their comes from their operating, but the cost of the salt, the cost of the repairs to the vehicles, the cost of the brine, cost of the the contractual services all come from the snow removal trust. How much is in that trust now? Currently, I just did the calculation today. We have a little bit more than seven hundred and eighty thousand. So we have a nice little surplus there, seven hundred eighty thousand. How now. much did we use out of that trust in two thousand and seventeen? Twenty seventeen. You don't have to tell me now, but please give me the answer at a Abs later date. Absolutely. Have I would like to know what we used in 2015, 16, and 17 out of that trust, please. I just have a um, uh, routine kind of a question. So if we're not using the money out of that account for snow and, and ice and whatnot, it'll just sit there? For the next year. Correct. It just keeps accruing. Correct, yes. Okay. It's a trust that if the balance will carry over, and I believe, I want to say, uh, there was a year 2012, 2013, where we had a nice little reserve in there, and we had a horrible winter and right. wiped it out mm -hmm. to no, bare I mean, bones. There should always be a nice reserve. Because, Absolutely. Uh, you know. Uh, we got hit that one year where we know. had snow, like eight different weekends, two to five inches. Right. Yeah. And we got slammed in overtime. Brine, salt, everything. I mean, I don't know if there was brine then when we, I don't think we were using it yet. But we got hit that one year. We had eight to ten storms every week. You know, it was almost like every week we got hit. And, and part of one of the things that I do is, is I'll, I'll um, try to see if there's any uh, transfers that I can make within March that then we can move some of our appropriation reserves into the snow removal trust so we can beef up that reserve so that we can you know have that available for those expenditures so we don't have to take it from the operating. You're the superstorm. Remember, we got destroyed too with a blizzard mm -hmm. the week yeah, after the superstorm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A couple of days later. Yeah. Lou, what number are you using for that, that number that you threw out us? 50-something thousand for the two POs you saw? Yes, sir. What, what, is, what do you... What's what storm are you talking about for fifty thousand? Well, what do you, what does that number represent? Storms. We we brought the contractor out on the snowstorm of December fifteenth, right? And then also on the uh, January third and fourth. But that number represents just for the outside contract. That's not your whole total cost of the no, snow yeah, the operation. Correct. Yes, that was just, just for the contract. Right, right, I, I didn't know actual snow plowing. Yes. I don't want people to think that it's only costing us fifty no, something. No, no, <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Salt was a hundred grand alone. <laughs> no, I, I have some of the numbers. That's why I wanted to make sure. Well, then you see a lot of the overtime. I mean, it was one hundred fifty thousand approved last year in overtime. One hundred thirty-nine thousand of it was encumbered. Like a lot of it's from storms. I mean, you know, they're, they're out there. They're working 16-hour days and taking a rest in between, because if I'm not mistaken, a lot of the guys, right? Yes, sir. So, I don't know. All right, that's enough snow for me. Yeah. I'm with you, ma'am. <laughs> uh, the next slide, talk about our operating expenses. Um, I did ask for more money for uh, road supplies. Um, the reason I did that is we have a paver that hadn't been used in, for quite a while. We started using it last year. We uh, successfully paved the uh, part of the road going up to the senior center and got rid of some of the, the bad areas there. We also paved a, a good portion of tear pack that was very bad. So those are the kinds of things. That we're, we're not set up to be a road paving crew, but where you have a lo lot of series of potholes that we can mill out and pave one area, we can do that. So I'm trying to put some more money in there to to get the asphalt. Well, that was planned when we purchased it, that there would be sections like, even if it was like a quarter of a mile, a tenth of a mile, mm -hmm. a and it uh, extended the life of the road. Yes, ma'am. That's... And guys I think enjoyed it doing it. Well. They, they enjoyed to see the fruits of their labor uh, when they were done. Uh, we did reduce the uh, road paint line item. That's when we go back and do striping. That's based on what we used last year. We're trying to bring that number uh, more into line. Um, we did reduce the street and building sign line to, to line up with what we spent last year. Uh, communications and maintenance, that's predominantly our GPS tracking system. Uh, we reduced that to what our more actual costs are. And then uh, 
training and education, um, we increased that $1,000, but we also reduced, uh, reduced it for another line item that did not have any personnel in it. So we're really uh, asking $4,000 less than last year. And that's and that an operating? Pardon me? And that's an operating? Yes, sir. And like it was mentioned uh, before with the training, we have uh, DPW-specific training we send people to. Uh, Brian is going to be going for the CPWM courses. Uh, we have another member going for CPWM. So. Well, let me, let me ask you a question, because yes, you bring up line painting, which is kind of one of my things that always bothers me. We live in a very dark community, mm -hmm. and when you're driving at night, if you're a good driver, you use those lines to judge, you know, whether you're going too far off into the, you know, shoulder, or which we don't have any ditches, is correct, you know. Would we be, be manpower is always an issue. Every time we, we talk or I talk to the manager and I say, you know, can we get this done? It's a manpower issue. At some point, you got to start to question, do we start outsourcing this type of stuff? Because putting money in these line items this and the work the can't get done. So the line item for painting would be outsourced? Yes, for the most part. That, that would be we'd hire, you know, <laughs> go out to bid, um, you know, a couple of the different ones in the area and, and, and issue a contract for that. Okay, that's I mean, good to do, know. We do small small lines, and yeah, we did the the, the parking lot at um, the PAL building. We're right. we're going to try to do this parking lot. That's the kind of stuff we do. But when it comes out to if we have a two mile, three mile stretch, we're outsourcing. We're not going to do that. We're not set up for that. We don't have the proper equipment. I got you. Okay. How much did we outsource last year for for line striping our roads? Do we know? I thought it was. Um, it's right here. I was just looking at. Well, is that in, it? Just 20, says 000? it just says road paint. So we, they budgeted thirteen thousand. They transferred or canceled off sixteen thousand. So they only spent fourteen thousand. Road paint, well, yeah, thirty thousand. We approved right. thirty thousand. Yeah. The final was fourteen. You're asking for twenty this year. Yeah. Yes, correct. You didn't. There was there was nothing spent from 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 this line item last year. I believe that was, you know, the which is why transition. the roads are so bad, and that you can't see the roads, the lines on a lot of these roads. Makes sense. I hope that's something we focus on, because I'm telling you, having young kids and a lot of young drivers, that's a safety issue. When you outsource, do they use the paint, or we pay for the paint? When we outsource, they would. It's uh, well, you pay per linear well, foot, and they provide everything to. The paint, whether it's the, the, the latex, the glass beads, thermal plastic for the stop bars, things like that. Look, I'm not going to pin this on you because you weren't here. Yes, sir. But when somebody asks us for $30,000, we approve $30,000 and nothing gets spent. It makes me want to ask, what else did you really not need money for? I think they needed it. It just didn't get done. Well, then where's the money now? Was it sent to some other line item? Or is it sitting there in an account for road painting? You probably move it off. From last point. year, it was moved to another line item. But um, as you said, we've, we've uh, what they're budgeting for in 20, uh, 2018 is uh, $20,000. Are you sure that's going to be enough? Or do you need more in that, uh, in that line item? Are there other things you really think need to be done that are not getting done because there's not enough money in that line item? Just asking your question. There, like you said before, there's a lot of roads that need striping. Um, I, I couldn't give you a hard number on, on what it would take. Jim, do you have any from your... <coughs> no, I think part of the problem was there was some personnel changes last year that occurred during the year, that probably is why this didn't get done. Okay. So that can be addressed this year. We need to do the painting. It's a simple contract. We can get it out to bid. We pick the roads, and we go out and have the line stripers do them. Was there an assessment needs done on the roads? There has not been. So we don't even know if 20 is enough or 30 is enough. Or 90. We're going to say 20, and, and that's what we're going to do is 20, but we may really need more, which is another troubling thing. You know, you would think that you would have a five-year plan or assessment plan and then say, you know, over three years, five years, this is how many 
lane miles we need to do and budget it from that way. This is one of those items that traditionally has been handled by DPW as a maintenance item every year. It's been the same thing, like you said, you don't need to repaint the lines every year. Mm -hmm. You can do the roads every, once every five years, let's say. So it's take the lane miles, back it out by the number of years you think it's going to last, you get a total, you go out to bid, you come up with a number. I mean, that's something that I can work with Paul on this year to make sure that we get done. But is that something that we could wait for to decide on with this budget to see if you can do that assessment, then we could have a better idea? It's kind of hard. If we don't set the budget, we have to set the budget by, what, middle of April? Well, Statutorily, by the time we get the ordinances through, vote well, right, correct, Luke? Introduction needs to be basically the meeting, uh, well, probably either one of the March meetings. Huh. Worst case scenario is you budget 20000 or whatever the number is that's requested. You do an assessment later. We figure out which roads we want to do. And if it's twenty five, five thousand gets covered from another line item in the end of the year, just like every other line item we do in town. So, so uh, regarding line items, mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just me asking. Mm -hmm. So we just move money from one line item to another as needed? Y well, yeah, yes. Um, statutorily, what? Yeah, we, me. I, I'm trying to be. We can vote on it. Yes, I, I prepare a resolution that is voted on by, the, by the governing body. Statutorily, we're not, we're, we're not allowed to have an over expenditure. Um, if we do, we, we can have an over expenditure. We would just have to fund it in the subsequent year's budget. So, the state allows you to, um, make budgetary line transfers um, to cover a, if someone's running low on something you're allowed if there is an excess in another line you are permitted to do that statutorily um, if a line if a specific sub account line item is overexpended but the total o e for that department is is not that 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 is permitted but this is to avoid over expenditures um, it's 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 something I do to try to keep fiscal prudence. If it's something that the governing body would like me to get away from doing, then we could discuss it. No, I'm just asking the mm -hmm. question. So, so it, is it any amount that comes back to us for us to approve it? Any amount, or only if the amount is more than the total amount of the budget? Let me um, let me say this. Any anything the the net of the transfers will be zero. We will never be adding more to the budget than what was adopted. So what I'm bringing to somewhere, I'm I'm taking from an. It has to be an even uh, amount. Understood. Mm -hmm. I understand that. So mm -hmm. so let me let me ask this. Uh, just for my I'm sorry. Just sure. For my edification. Right. Absolutely. So if we're talking, I'm just going to say DPW and let's say the fire because we just looked at the two. Sure. So if fire is you know allotted one hundred dollars. And DPW is at two hundred dollars, and fire is has three line items. Line one and two are over budget. Mm -hmm. Line three is under budget. Then you are able to move the money within that budget. As long as their total O and E with is or not without mm -hmm. us, the council knowing. Correct. Correct. So then the second question is: Fire has one hundred. DPW has 200, fire spent 50, DPW needs the 50, then you come to the council and the council has to approve that. That is absolutely correct. Those November appropriations, right. that's okay. what they are. That's exactly what they are, the move from one line item in the budget to another line item in the budget. But, it, but not necessarily in the department, so there still could be, you know, fungibility within the department. Correct. Right. Okay. Any crossover Some departments have more money and more flexibility. I, I, I'm seeing that. Than other departments. <laughs> well, there's a much higher dollar, plus different things may arise in DPW that were all expected. No, I, yeah. I understand the purpose, the reason why. Yeah, they can take it. I'm just, just yeah. asking the, the question. CFO, the CFO can move the money. Uh, Mr. Manager, I have a question. Do you think the 20000 is going to be sufficient, or should we consider uh, moving that amount uh, upward because we feel that there's definitely... Uh, 
a need that's pretty apparent at this point. Well, I wouldn't feel comfortable upping it until I knew what the need was. I would agree with you. Right? Yeah. So well, unless they could come back within a need within a week or two, <laughs> you know, and give us kind of an idea of what roads are going to be, you know, done, then. Well, yeah. could you, could you, I may, maybe we could do it this way. Could you do a three-year look back on how many roads were done within the past three years? Yeah, we could do. Like we did a big study years ago with our roads with Rutgers, in conjunction with Rutgers. Mm -hmm. About six, seven years ago. I think that was for paving. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, probably, paving. probably ten years ago. It's been over ten years now. I've been using that list since I started here. Uh -oh. Well, I've been here a long time. Are you right? You know, I was He's trying to shorten skirts. how old I am. Okay? I know it was about ten years ago, but I was trying to shorten it to six or seven. Um, and that was very helpful. In, in more pressing needs, how to stretch the life of a road like Councilwoman Smith was talking about. Um, what can we do here to try to adjust? Because if just some listening in a little bit, uh, I don't think we have a clue about what's going on with what needs to be relined and sound like we have no basis other is there than a way, if maybe, it becomes a drastic emergency. Could we do a schedule? That's what I'm asking. Can we, do we need to put five to seven or 10,000 in a line item and, and give a contract to somebody to assess this for us? So we have a, we have a feel of this. And I'm not blaming nobody, just yeah. that it seemed like nobody really knows the answer to it. If you want me to get involved, it, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is go out there, figure out the roadways that have the striping on them. Who get involved? I would. Oh, I was going to say... Divide it by the number of years we think that the paint will last on the roads. Mm -hmm. And I can give you a cost based on what we see on average construction projects. And we can budget that line item every year. Now, I know in years past, you guys have eliminated that line item. I know in other years, you've had it tried to be put into the capital line items. But we cannot do that because Mr. Palazzo will not certify that as a capital expense because we can't... Uh, Why did it last for so many years? It only well, because what line, it really what only lasts for cut? what line item? Did it we was cut? road paint in the years past. I remember. Can you give me that number? Previous over the last uh, eight previous years, administrations. Seven years? Oh, okay. okay, previous administrations. No, no, no. I'm saying previous manager uh, DPW directors. Oh, not the governing body. Uh, that I'm not sure. Uh, well, we can't give you marching orders, but I think the, the manager can give you marching orders. We want a better handle on what needs to be done here in the in the very near future. But the manager needs to give you that direction. That's the way it works here in the lovely township of Howell, correct? It's Thursday. We have another meeting on Tuesday. That should be enough time. I don't know about that one. <laughs> how long do you, how what long do you want done first? That's all. Yeah, what do you want done first? Do you want the sewer job out? You want this done? We want it all to. Well, I know you do. I think I'm going to quote Deputy Mayor Nicastro. Sometimes you just got to lower your expectations. <laughs> if you don't want to give us the right employees, you have to lower your expectations. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You whoa, are whoa. the employees. Whoa. I'm just making okay. a quote. We nah. just said, extortion. We just said, yeah. <laughs> That's extortion. Uh, we didn't take it's reality. Money. We didn't take that money from your department Yet. and put it over into the fire bureau, did we? Yet. Okay. <laughs> You just answered your own question. Seriously, how long do you think a, you like this one, huh? it would take to, to, to formulate a hypothesis and the on study, that? Did they have no. They no, have it'll, uh, I mean, it, it depends. If, if we're going to do it in-house, yes. you know, is it something I can do in a month, potentially? Or my staff, I would have probably trained mm -hmm. one of my staff members, you know, younger guys to do that. Um, if we wanted to, we could probably hire one of the consultants because they'll do anything you ask them to yeah, as long as you pay them. So, you know, is it a $10,000 line item to a consultant that we could spend and have them do an analysis on our roads on the striping? If you really want to get technical, there's all sorts of reflectivity standards that you would have um, that can get ridiculously expensive as far as doing a study to do that. It involves actually putting meters down on every stripe. You know, I'd, I'd rather just take the less time and just repaint them. So I think we can come up with a number. It's just whether or not the council wants us to, you know, utilize a consultant, do it in-house, and how long, when's the time frame you want it done. It sounds like it's almost like the Varazano Bridge. You start painting it, by the time you're done at the end of it, you have to go back and start. That's exactly again. right. And it's the same as our roads. Uh, you start paving them, and by the time 
we get every road in town paved, they'll all be needed to be repaved. They've never all been paved at once because they just last for so long. Mm -hmm. That's it. I mean, I, I've, Mayor, for your edification, I've given the council a presentation over the last few years where at today's current prices, we need $4 million a year in road paving money mm -hmm. to pave every road in town once in 30 years. Mm -hmm. Now, that's probably wow. 10 years longer than we really should be. They should be done probably once every 20 years for our lower end roads, our higher end roads, places like Aldrich Road, West Farms Road, they should be done every 10 years, right? So even at $4 million at today's prices, it would still take 30 years for us to repave the entire at town. At today's prices. At today's prices. And is that cost in the, the materials or salary everything. or equipment? Nope, that's, that's in uh, contracting it out. And you know, providing for everything, milling, paving, fixing drainage, improve you know mm -hmm. problems when they're going right. there, and that's just a mill and pave. That's not full reconstruction. Right. So some of our roads, you know, last year or the couple years ago, you guys bonded uh, money for the Sunset Drive drainage improvements. You know, that was a full reconstruction job because it needed it. The pipes were 60 years old, failing. You know, we have to replace them. It's flooding people's neighbor, you know, flooding people's houses out. Right. So when you add those in, because we haven't done anything in 60 years, that draws up $4 million up. And that's right? not unusual. There are a lot of roads that are definitely well over 30 years. Oh, I, I literally get requests multiple times a week where the, where the email would normally start out, my road hasn't been paved since 1985. Very accurate statement. My response is usually the roads I'm going after haven't been paved since 1965. And I send you most of those emails, actually. You do. Yes, you do. Thank you. And then you're going to get the people in the new developments who are going to walk in this room and say, we don't need our road repairs. Why are we paying for them in our taxes? So it's a little delicate balance of... Sure. And the road painting is the same thing. It's just if you want to get a, a, a schedule together and a procedure on it, we can do that. And I can work with Paul and, and Brian and... And we'll put together I, I a plan. Think what, I'm, what I'm hearing, and, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that I think the council would just like to know, you know, is the amount allotted realistic? Does it need to be doubled? You know, I, I think that that's the, where the we, question. Yeah, where are we at? I mean, with the road, with that, with that report we did in conjunction with Rutgers, at least we had an idea of where we were at. Um, I think it's a reasonable request. Sure. Yeah. I know it's extra work on you, but I, I think it's reasonable. I mean, if you want to make, you know, we, we fiduciarily responsible decisions, I think we need to have the data to be able to do that. It's no problem. Thank you. Agreed. You asked for one new employee, correct? Yes, sir. Where, do you, uh -huh. where does that help us? Are we outsourcing some of that now? Do we no. not have the capabilities or the expertise? It will increase the, the lifeline of our... Don't you remember last year I brought up the welding situation? Yes. Went round and round about the welding. Yes. This um, would probably help that. Well, the, 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 the position is a mechanic welder, uh, so they do both. Um, we have 337 pieces of equipment and vehicles in, in our inventory that we maintain. Um, some require much more maintenance than others, mm -hmm. some, some less. Uh, you calculate out to a maintenance equivalent unit. Um, some of it is uh, subjective on the calculation, but uh, according to this, we could use nine mechanics based on this, this number. Um, How many are? This will give us... Uh, This will give us a total of uh, six mechanics, a crew leader, and a foreman. But I'd say mechanics, because yes, because crew leaders and foreman is also mechanics, yes, aren't sir. they? And and what else were we looking at there that we spoke about when we were doing the budget in the office? Another employee over in DPW. We had discussed an electrician. Um, and we substituted the mechanic welder in lieu of the electrician. You thought that was more of a priority that you needed? Uh, it, it is, and I also felt that it would be hard to get a licensed electrician to 
come to work for the salary that would be offered. Uh, I did a little research. It came out to, I think, 60000 a year was an average salary for a licensed electrician. But um, I, I don't think we'd be able to fill it. What do we, any idea of the cost involved in using outside electricians with those licenses to the township right now? Any way to project that? on projects you currently have in place that uh, we know we're going to be doing? We, we, could, we could possibly project it. What we've, uh, we've done with this past project uh, where we renovated the manager's area and the EOC, um, we hired a, a licensed electrician who would, we would pull a majority of the wires and he would just come in and, and check them and do final connections. So that's how we worked. How'd it work out? Worked out very well. You think it was cost efficient for the township doing it that way? Very cost efficient. So that kind of answers the question of whether or not we we could get by without a, because we know even if you couldn't get somebody for 60000 we know you got to put another thirty to 40000 on top of it for cost. Yes. Um, we're paying for all the materials, using an outside electrician. It, you don't see nothing pressing that we must have somebody on staff full time. Right now, no, because I don't know of any major renovations that we are planning. Uh, the manager's area and the EOC was a major renovation that we did. We had also done a lot of work in the OEM building. However, as you know, that was finalized by contract. So other than that, um, we have, we're hoping to do some, a little bit of work in the uh, DPW garage, but that also can be handled by contracting out, uh, us pulling the wire and the, and the contractor doing the final connections and using his license. I'm okay with the welder mechanic. You know, we've spoken about that pretty much in depth, and I understand as much as I don't know much about mechanic things, but it's very necessary and to, for the upkeep of the machinery and having somebody on staff be a valuable addition. So I'm okay with that. I just have a question on a different subject. Okay. You have approximately seven people that have resigned. Have you replaced it? Am I not looking at the right document? Which? What are you saying that? Uh, Public Works, page 115. I don't have that page. Uh, it's the book. All of those resignations were backfilled. They were, were all backfilled. Exactly. Yes. With the, with the exception of the... With the, exception, uh, with the exception of the confidential assistant. That yes. is correct. And could you please explain? That was my next question. What is a confidential assistant? That was a title given to, um, I, I guess it was an unclassified title. Correct. Uh, given to the administrative assistant who was our, our office manager in, in DPW. So you spread out the work instead of hiring another one? Yes, sir. These upgrades, have you went through them? Yes, I did. <clears throat> Fine, what page? Page 117. No, I know he mentioned the five upgrades. I wrote it down when he was mm -hmm. when he was speaking. Oh, I see. The five upgrades when they move to another position, they also have step increases that come with that position. Also, is it the same position, just an upgrade? What's the difference? It's an upgrade in um, grade, and I, the way I understand it, you move up to the equivalent salary, and then one step over. Is that how it works? I believe so. You would, you would, if, if say for instance, the the position that they were at was at a grade 22, and they're going to a uh, grade 24, they would move to the salary step that is matching at the um, matching at the. Uh, at the 24 grade and then would have whatever steps that would bring them to the uh, seven step back uh, maximum. So what am I looking at if somebody, am I looking at somebody going from 65 to $75,000? What's the? Oh no, 
Um, just asking the question. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. It's, it's, I think it's close to like 16. The, the total for the five, I believe, was all, almost around $16,000. So it's about a $3,000 exactly. increase per, per exactly. upgrade. Roughly, yes. Some, some are two, some are three. Exactly. Depending on the, um, the position. I think the crew leaders to the equipment operators are roughly $3,000. So forgive me, because mm -hmm. this whole step sure. thing is, so if someone if, is at an 18 mm -hmm. whatever and is current, is going into an 18 but is at a 7, mm -hmm. they go up to the 18? No, like say for example, if this person was say an 18-7 and they're getting bumped up to a grade 22, so then they would get play, be placed in the step at grade 22 that the 18-7 is at, so say if that's a 22 step three then they would be entitled to move up to then they would have move up to step four next year step five in the following year step six step seven okay i could look to see if i have one of the sheets oh that's i just you know they know i need to ask the question sure. oh, oh sorry oh. so luke based on the whole dpw because as the mayor said everything is all over the place and different just give me the are we going up approximately based on this sheet in his budget total, like four hundred and fifty-six thousand, is that a, a right number? Um, I'm, I I can't. Tell. I'm trying to cite. I know the salaries are going Based up. Mr. Novello's sheet. Three hundred thousand plus plus expenses about one thirty-six. Yeah, the three nineteen plus the one thirty-six. Well, his total budget for two thousand seventeen was four million six hundred eight. If that's the right number, now he's right. going to five so million sixty-four. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. So Correct. that's about four hundred fifty-five thousand increase Correct. in DPW's budget. Correct. Across across all of his divisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's a lot. Mm -hmm. If you take a look at the bottom here, Rob, it shows you the, uh, mm -hmm. the two numbers for the two the expenses and the salaries. So four hundred thousand dollar increase. That's a lot of money. We know some of it is in the salaries, correct? On yes. the upgrades. Yes. Where are the other money's coming from that that we need to put in four hundred thousand more into DPW this year? We know a, a new person, new mechanic. What are we looking at? Seventy thousand. It was. I, I think also Mr. Novella com completed this based on, c c you had completed this sheet based on your or, your or original budget requests, um, and the, the manager and myself had made have have since made subsequent cuts to your budget. So, I it, if you'd like, we can update this sheet for you for the next meeting to show what the true. So this 455 not. may not be the right number. Might not be the right doing, number. That's important. That is important. Because to knit, to go through every line item where the increases were would take probably a few hours. You know? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do it that way. Sure. I so. can absolutely do that for you. My key things with it is what's it going to cost for the new employee, which I'm okay with. That. I really understand it. But... I have a hard time saying I'll be okay with raising the cost of your department 10%. Okay? I mean, that's what this number tells me when I look at 2017 and 2018. What, what DPW bathrooms, what is, what is that? The new bathroom. Oh, at the... That's under the Capitol. Yeah. This one, uh, this one hundred thousand dollars for the capital pool. No, ma'am. This is separate and aside. Three hundred thousand dollars. The two, the two columns on the left-hand side, uh, B and G Capital and Road Department Capital. That's um, okay. that was our initial going into it. And, okay. Uh, I'm sorry if I've added no. to any confusion. No, but I thank you for making the print a little larger and brighter. I will say that. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so it doesn't include it. All right. If um, 
Yeah, Lou, what, what were your numbers, Lou? Then, in the budget that the manager presented, this sheet was the original sheet when he first asked for those numbers? This sheet shows, um, as I understand it, the revised numbers, but the actual expenditures in 2017. Mm -hmm. I can I could definitely go back with uh, Mr. Novello and we could double check our numbers for you. Make sure that they make sure that this is um, tightened up and we can itemize it for you as well. Absolutely. Yeah, because right off the bat we're looking at a 10 percent increase in salaries. Mm -hmm. 2017 salaries are 3,047, 3,367 are being asked for in 2018. That's a 10 percent increase. And salaries alone. Where's 10 percent now? I understand some's coming from. We're anticipating the raises with the new contract. I do understand that. But even the five upgrades at 16,000. Okay, say it was at the top two percent increase. Okay, two percent on on 300 is is 60,000. So I have 60. I have 16. I have a new person for, for, let's say, 70. I'm looking at salary increases of 146,000. These projected numbers right here, I got 320,000. There's $180,000 in there. Well, I see 80,000 here in, ve in vehicle maintenance. Why an 80,000 increase in vehicle maintenance? I mean, what am I... Can we buy new vehicles last year? Maintenance. Not new, that's capital. No. I know, but did we buy new ones? The way this is done out doesn't explain it to us well. We need a better explanation. And we can provide that. We, we can, can absolutely provide that for you. Yeah. Do you think it would be a good idea, since you stated earlier that uh, you hadn't looked at the capital list yet, that you uh, deal with that before we do? Isn't that what's usually done? I'm not sure. This is my first budget dealing here, so. Well, we had a brief conversation. That's why I was asking. Yeah. And I, I thought was it was always the manager takes a look at the capital and then makes their cuts and then comes back and then we. Right, but I thought that was done separate from mm -hmm. the regular. We want operation. you to be on the hook when you come now. Right, and but, but uh, my point is, it's it, it doesn't make sense for us to do it now if you haven't done it. So if you would take care of that, and if if they'd have to come back for. I, I think I muddled the waters, and I apologize for that when I gave you the sheet. I was trying to help out, and I guess no, I did not. We have it. I'm talking about a different sheet. Yeah. Don't worry, you didn't muddy any waters. Well, no, the, to the, the mayor's point, portion, when it's all fine. over the place, and I understand why they do it, I can't understand. How much did your budget go up? There's, you know, there's no clear. And then where did it go up? I would have to go through every outline item. You know, I know you went up, just for example, in, in, in supplies of salt and, uh, and sand. You know, it's not much, but it's something. Do I got to go through, do we have to go through every line item to say, where did, how did we get to that number? That's, that's a long process. Well, their capital is... Uh Capital's another something Longer process. totally different. What's happened in years past uh, since I've been here is we've typically presented all of the capital to the council. At one time. At one time. Well, even, like even tonight, um, the manager had never really cut it beforehand, wanted to present everything to the council, let the council digest everything, make any cuts you want right now, and then look at it again after this meeting to see where we are as a whole because you guys don't have a whole idea until you see all the capital presentations from all the departments. That's correct. So we can't look at what you're going to spend as a whole for the town and prioritize what you want to cut until you look at all of them. That's I, what I, and that's what I informed Brian. So when he said he hasn't looked at it, it's because I told him that's how the process has normally worked. I agree with you, but I, for me personally, I don't know how many vehicles DPW has Number one. Number two, how many of them were bought in 17, 16, 15, 10? So how do I know if the vehicles that are being requested are justifiable? So even if I look at this, I still, 
I still don't know. And if we bought purchase vehicles last year, the eighty thousand dollars for maintenance, what are those? What is that for? Are those for which vehicles? So I get that's that's why it's just a little easier for me personally to know. You know, I'm ex I want to get rid of this vehicle that's twenty five years old for this vehicle. I mean, I. Do you know what I mean? Does that, that make sense or no? Yeah, it's just that last year they bought a lot of vehicles because... They weren't purchased prior. They weren't purchased prior. They were allocated a previous budgets. Understood. Yeah, last year there was no money allocated for vehicles. Correct. You, you cut it all. Yes. Because there was previous money left over that they didn't spend yet. That was required to be spent. Yeah, and they did. And, and as soon as Paul got here, that was one of the first things he had really worked on, was yeah, getting all that spend, done. Yeah, you don't spend millions of dollars, you say you need. Obviously, you didn't need it as bad as you said. So, I understand that. That's well, all uh, caught up now? I'm going to have a bunch of questions, though. Like last year, we spoke about the bathroom, too, in the DPW. Yep. And that number wasn't 350000 last year. No. We talked about the locker room. Oh. Mm. The locker room. That is just to redo the walls, put a new floor down, and get new lockers. The bathroom right now, you have to walk out the hall, down the hall, across the way to get to the bathroom and shower. I feel the bathroom and, lock, and locker rooms should be co-located. We also do not have a fit ladies locker room, and I don't know if we ever hire a female. I, I don't know what we would do. There's a Presently, a closet in there. Don't so shower at the same time. What? Um, pardon me, ma'am. Don't shower at the same Ooh. time. Um, Ooh. not on my watch, ma'am. Well, I was gonna add, yeah. there could be specific, to, you know, schedule. They would expect that from me. <laughs> Definitely wasn't seen. I was just couple. trying to be. See that trying to lighten the level a little. So <laughs> anyway, it, it, it is a different project. Um, I. You know, this is a learning process for me, and I, I didn't mean to muddle the waters with this, and I apologize. Um, I wasn't prepared to do the capital uh, presentation tonight. Don't, don't. That's that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. When you're when we're ready, we're we're ready. We're not. If you're not ready, you're wasting our time as well as your time. Look, you only took over last year. Yes, sir. Okay. Nope. Nobody's going. Uh, I'm fine with what you presented, but I'm not agreeing with what you presented. You're not getting me to agree to raise the salaries, just just salaries in your department, 10%. From the sheet you gave me, I'm seeing a 10% increase in salaries. Okay? That's not happening. Not with a vote for me. I'd look to the other four members of the governing body, and I would do your best if you really want to see that happen. To try to get yourself three votes, because you won't get this one. You could come up with the check the, the percentage of increase real quick. It's a simple number: three thousand forty-seven to three thousand three hundred sixty-seven. It's about a believe me. Believe me, it's almost a ten percent increase. Do we have the number of the costs? We didn't we do PD last year. The bathrooms in PD, and we did. How, what, what was the cost in construction between PD and DPW? No, we have PD and OEM. 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 Forgive. Okay, which one do you want? Both. Both. Combined. How much do we spend in bathrooms in the last three years? And why Upgrading. do you, think oh, you, I don't know. you need... Uh, we haven't, we haven't finalized the PD locker room renovation numbers yet. We're currently waiting on some final balancing reports from our... Did we budget a, about 180000 for that, I believe? I don't know off the top I think of my head. It's 160 or 180, I think. Something like that. Yes. And we heard flack because I think only about sixty or eighty thousand was allocated for the DPWs. Correct. But I think I also remember hearing that we were going to do it in house, so it was going to be less expensive. But uh, that was the locker room. Then, that was just the locker rooms. Yes, sir. Right. And apparently, including the, the purchase of the lockers. Our ability. Uh, so I what's understand. The matter with the, with, what's the matter with the bathrooms now, other than you have to walk around? Are they in working shape? They. They work. They're 1970s era. Um, so is mine at home. It works fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. And we maintain them so they do work. Um, yeah, us too. It, well, just not functionally. Um, 
doesn't it doesn't functionally work and also if we ever hire females I have no shower room for them well so uh, just he just saying this is 2018 and there are restrooms that are unisex all over the world all over the world I've been to them so I mean if the bathroom if the the shower is in one location outside of the locker room I can't see why you might need separate showers I, I don't know okay. right now we presently have no female shower facilities we have a male bathroom with two shower with a, uh, a shower uh, was it a quad in there it's a double double okay. connected to the men's bathroom yeah okay right now. okay thank you for that explanation it's, that, yeah, it's all in one. So if we had okay, a, that that we changes had that changes the. Sorry. Is the septic project finished down by DPW? The septic, the septic system is that finished? No. There was an issue with the pump. Um, it's close to being solved. Pump was dropped in Saturday. Uh, I spoke to the contractor today. They are they were supposed to have the electrician there today. They did not make it. Uh, it'll either be tomorrow or Monday to make some of the electrical switch over, and then they may need to make the final connection. So everything's done. The septic's in. The tanks are in. Everything's in, with the exception of the final electrical connection and final switch over of the pipe. And we need to do that. And there was an issue with the. So the waste is not using, but the waste is not going into the new system yet because you don't have a pump, right? Correct. Right. Correct. So and then the old system gets removed. The old system, the field can stay. The tank will have to get the top and one side crushed down to the bottom and then it'll get filled in so that nobody can have a sinkhole and fall in it, you know, 30 years from now. So am, am I to understand that we just need more clarification on this particular budget and uh, when, when, we're we, when are we able to look at the information that apparently we all need to make more ch decisions? Next week or? Come back next week. You're around sure. next week? Because you'll have to come back, obviously. So. Yes, ma'am. Which which night would you like to have him come back? Tuesday night is the police department right. budget. And Thursday night's a planning and board. And Thursday that's, night is my budget a, and a planning board right, meeting. So the planning, I would say the planning board meeting would negate them coming Thursday evening. Or up to you. Deputy Mayor and I don't attend planning. It's got it has to be uh, here. Yeah. Oh. I was trying to be mm. balancing. Nice try. Well, we canceled. Or we can just do it quick. I'll tell I'll you what. That. We canceled the Tuesday night meeting for uh, the twentieth. I don't know what else to say there. We could do it Thursday as long as I go quick, and I don't yeah, really have yeah, any. There's, uh, a, there's a real good happen. chance for that. I don't, I don't really have any new uh, increased spending this year, so there's not much to beat me up on except capital, and I only have three line items for capital, so it could go quick. And we could also bring Paul back for that. Well, we try. If, uh, if we don't make it, we don't make it. What are we going to say? Try it for Tuesday and then let's we'll try, try it for Thursday. If we don't make it, we don't make it. What are we going to do? No, PD's coming Thursday. Tuesday. Yeah, you're coming for, Thursday. Yeah, try try for Thursday. So he's going to come back Thursday. And, and we then don't get just, it done, we don't get it done. We know we have to schedule another time. Right, and you're limited until right. 7 o'clock. So we'll have three hours on Thursday. We'll try to rush through them. Yeah, there has to be more clarity, though. I don't know what else to say. I mean, I'll present it in a much clearer form. The numbers don't add up. That's the trouble. It doesn't have to do with clarity. I understand numbers. I'm pretty good with yeah, numbers. Oh, yeah. Hey, what else we got? It's, it's late. So That's it, right? Brian, no other? That's correct. This was okay. Things. Okay. So we have a direction and uh, we'll move forward. What do we need? Do you have to read anything? Um, there's no citizens. The I think you should make the announcement anyway about opening it to the public. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to come up to discuss any of the um, budget that we have discussed so far this evening? For the record, no one's here. For the record. Don Smith. <laughs> oh, what about Don? Oh, Don Smith, former environmental commissioner. There being none, I would like to close that portion of the meeting. 
Um, again, the next meeting dates are Tuesday, February 13 at 4 o'clock and Thursday, February 15 at 4 o'clock. I would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Mrs. O'Donnell? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mayor Burger? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. 